Hallelujah. Can you feel his presence in this place? Can you feel his touch? Amen. Amen. We believe in the powerful God. Amen. We believe in a miracle working God. Amen. We believe in the faithful Jesus. Amen. We believe in a God that heals. Amen. We believe in a God that restores. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is why we can worship him with all freedom. Amen. And with all confidence. Amen. Amen. Because we understand that as we worship him, he comes down. And when he comes down, it is for your benefit. It is for my benefit. Amen. Amen. When he comes down, amen, the story of your life will change. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We believe in a powerful God. We believe in a miracle waking Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Spirit that reveals secrets. The Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. That speaks unto us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's go quickly into the word of God. Amen. Jesus. Let's read from the book of Mark chapter 16. The gospel according to St. Mark chapter 16, we read from verse 1 down to verse 7. Mark chapter 16 from verse 1 to verse 7. The Bible reads. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb and when the sun had risen, and they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. Amen. <laughs> I love that. The stone was rolled away. Amen. <laughs> Do you know that uh, um, the stone was not rolled away so that Jesus might escape? No, no, no. Because he was even able to, to rise up while the stone was on top of the tomb. <laughs> But he, he commanded the stone to be rolled away so that witnesses, amen, the people who come to the tomb may see the evidence of an empty tomb. Because remember, amen, <laughs> oh, they have sent guards, people to watch over the tomb so that they believe that maybe his disciples were going to come and steal his body. And so that they may lie that he rose up while he did not rise up. Amen. Him being God, he was even able to come out of the tomb while the stone was on top of the tomb. But he commanded that the stone is rolled away so that you and me and whosoever was doubting may believe that Jesus Christ of Nazareth has risen from the dead. Amen. And he is alive even today. He's alive this morning. And if he's alive, my brother and my sister, you will truly face your tomorrow. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Regardless of what you are going through today, if he is alive, the Bible says that he sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you, interceding for me. Amen. Amen. Day and night. He knows you right now as you are seated there. Amen. Amen. And the stone was rolled away. Amen. And this morning I am praying that every stone that is putting a block on your life is rolled away in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. 
And I, I, I am specifically angry against the witches, amen? Because most of the time, it's, it, it is witches who want to sort of come and attack our lives, amen? I am praying that as they try to stand on your way towards your, towards your destiny, that the hand of God will kick them away. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen! amen. amen. That every stone... Oh... That every the angel came down and rolled the stone away. Amen. So that Jesus was risen. Amen. And I'm praying for your life to rise up this morning. Amen. And I'm glad that the moderator has been talking about forgiveness and restoration. Amen. Throughout his words. Amen. <laughs> the stone was rolled away. Amen. Let's continue with the reading of the word of God. Amen. There is power in the word of God. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And, verse 5, and entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Amen. Verse 6, but he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified, he is risen. He is not here. Amen. He is alive. Amen. I will live. See the place where they laid him. Amen. Now, brethren, I want you to consider with me verse 7. Amen. That is the message that we want to share this morning. I want you to pay attention to verse 7. Verse 7. But go, tell his disciples, tell Jesus' disciples, <laughs> Isn't it God great? Amen? <laughs> and, you see, when I, you see, when I was reading here, in, my, in, my, um, in the uh, uh, New King James Version here that I'm reading from here, it is written, but go, tell his disciples, then they put a dash, and then they continued. To me, when I was reading this, it sounds like there was a, a small pause. <laughs> but go and tell his disciples. And! <laughs> Amen! <laughs> and! That's what I want you, brethren, to consider with me this morning. And! Peter. But Peter is also part of the disciples. <laughs> Have you noticed that from this reading? <laughs> but go and tell his disciples. And Peter. Ah. <laughs> Jesus. That he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. Amen. Let's pray for the reading of the word of God. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Your word is powerful, is alive is living. May you fall afresh on our spirit of God and breathe upon your word that this word brings life, transformation, healing, grace, favor, miracles, blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we decrease that you may increase in this blessing in our lives. May you minister unto our lives, spirit of God. Be with us, lead us. May the heavenly atmosphere manifest in this place that the grace of God is, O oh Lord Almighty God, present. We thank you, Jehovah, for your word. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now this message is for someone who has lost hope. Amen. And for someone who is wondering whether God is still around. Amen. You. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is a message for you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I've come across people who say that when someone does wrong to you, people um, some people say that forgiveness is for everyone and forgiveness 
is free. Amen? And some people say that. They've developed a principle that you need to forgive someone, but do not forget. <laughs> and when I ask people that I have the opportunity to ask the question, why should I forgive? and not to forget. They say that it will help you so that next time you don't fall into the same situation, into the same problem. So they say that forgive but don't forget. But I struggle a little bit with that principle. Amen? It may work for some people, but I found it challenging and very difficult. <clears throat> Because when I try to bring this principle in line, in the light of the word of God, amen, and this is the word you mentioned, amen, and I have also mentioned it in my notes. But I want to start with Hebrew 8, 12. The Bible says that God forgives our sins and remembers them no more. And Psalm 1, 3, 12, the Bible says that as far as the east is far from the west, amen, God has removed our transgressions from us. Amen? Amen? <laughs> so when I think about this analogy, about this principle, I struggle a little bit and begin wondering whether this is really a good strategy to live our lives. Amen. And offenses will always come. You see, life is not always a straight, a straight line. Amen. Life comes with ups and downs. Amen. Life gives us, life takes away. Amen. Life has moments of victory. Life has moments of defeat. Amen. And I thank God that God, our Father, as we shared last Sunday, he understands us even when we go through different life challenges and even when we are not able to stand our ground. Amen. Hallelujah. And this year we are praying for restoration in this church. We are believing God as we continue praying unto him that he will restore our lives in those areas where we feel we need him to intervene. Amen. In those areas where we feel the devil has attacked us, we are praying for a restoration and we are believing in a God that restores. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We are believing in a God that will bring back whatever the devil has stolen from your life. We are believing in a God that is going to come back to you again and bring light upon your life even when you were walking in darkness, but his light is going to come upon you so that you may see your way clear. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are believing in him that he is going to work through our lives. Regardless of what may be happening around us, amen, God, he is faithful, amen. God is a gracious God, amen. God remembers our sins no more, amen. When we repent, as the moderator was leading us into a prayer of repentance, when we repent from our sins, God will not remember our sins anymore. Amen? Like people, when you, <laughs> when you make a mistake once, when you do something wrong, people are easily to give up on you. Even after you've been a good person, you've done very good things, but when you make a mistake once, people are easily to give up on you. People are easily to run away from you because of just one mistake. <laughs> Amen? 
Amen. But I thank God that as we ask him to forgive our sins, he will remember our sins no more. He will not run away from us. He will not say that I've forgiven you, Amos, but I will not forget. No. <laughs> He doesn't say that. Amen. When he forgives me today, it is if as I've never sinned before. That's how he works with us. That's how he walks with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Not just because, you, you see, when you find me in a moment when I'm struggling, amen, and I'm not doing well, and then you say, that, oh, no, he's not a good person. I'm going to run away from him. No, life has ups and downs, and life comes with challenges. Amen? Amen. Yes, there will be days when I will find you struggling. Uh, there will be days when you may not be making sense. Amen? There will be days when you will be crying. doesn't mean that you have no faith when you are crying. Amen? Hallelujah. Faith can feel pain sometimes. Amen. <laughs> but the most important thing is that when you feel pain, you should hold on to your faith in God. Amen. 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 <laughs> you should hold on to him. You should hold on to him. Amen. The author and the finisher of your faith. Now, this is the story we are reading here, amen? Jesus and one of his disciples, Peter, amen? Peter was one of the disciples who was very sharp. He was very quick in responding, in talking, <laughs> in doing things. I remember even when Jesus was arrested, he grabbed his sword and cut someone's ear. <laughs> And Jesus, and Jesus grabbed the ear and put it back. Peter, how would you cut someone's ear? How are they going to hear the gospel then? When you've cut their ears. And this is what happens with the people of this world that have cut him off. Because he's done A, B, C, D to me. No, don't cut people off. Don't cut their ears off. Those ears still need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Why are you cutting me off? You don't need to cut me off your life. <laughs> this is the saying that we hear in the world. I've cut Amos off. Most of the time, he doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, he has done A, B, C, D. I'm cutting him off my life. <laughs> no. Amen. Peter cut someone's ear. And Jesus says, no, Peter. If I needed to defend myself, I was able to call unto the heaven. And my father who was in heaven was able to send me troops of soldiers to come and fight for me. This is not the way we fight in this battle. Amen. We don't fight physically. We fight in the spirit against the principalities and the power of the darkness. The power of the devil. Amen. We will not win it with physical strength. This is why the Bible says that it is not by might, not by power, but it is by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Thank God that God does not cut us off. Amen. And God will never cut us off. Amen. Because he is a gracious father. He's a loving God. Now, oh, <laughs> Jesus meets Peter. Amen. We know the story how Jesus meets Peter while he was busy doing his business. The Bible says Peter was a fisherman. Amen. <laughs> Peter was a fisherman and busy doing his business. And Jesus comes to him. He calls him, follow me, Peter. And Jesus, Peter leaves everything he was doing for the sake of following Jesus. Amen. And he embarks on a journey that is very challenging. A journey full of uncertainty, not knowing what will happen tomorrow and where is he going. But he is very courageous and he is following Jesus. Amen. 
Now time comes when Jesus is facing crucifixion, betrayal, amen? Difficult times. And the Bible says in Luke 22, 31, when Jesus and his disciples are having supper, Jesus tells Peter that, Peter, the devil desired to have you. <laughs> but I prayed for you so that your faith may not fail. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> and <the> Peter, <laughs> but I prayed for you so that your faith may not fail. Amen. 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 And Peter, he says, no, Lord, wherever you go, I will be with you. Even in, in the prison, I will be with you. Amen? <laughs> Peter was very confident to stand with the Lord in each and every situation. But Jesus tells him, I'm seeing the devil desiring your life. But I have prayed that your faith will stand strong. That your faith will not fail you. Amen. 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 And up until today, as the word of God says, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Amen? Because he understands us better. He knows where we are coming from. He knows where we are. He knows where we are going to. But the, the, the good message that I'm sharing this morning, I'm preaching to somebody and telling somebody that you are still going to get there. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. You are still going to get there. Amen. Do you know sometimes, have you wondered? Amen. <laughs> I've always asked myself a question. Sometimes when you are traveling to Melbourne, sometimes it takes you an hour. So suppose two hours on your way to Melbourne. But when you come back from Melbourne to Brisbane, so you find that there is an extra 30 minutes. Then I was wondering, why is that? Has the space increased from Melbourne to Brisbane? But it is the same space. It's the same kilometers. Oh, oh. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? Oh, no, you are doubting. Have you ever tra uh, uh, traveled, amen? I don't know, from whatever place. So one way took you three hours. The way back takes you three and a half hours. So why is that? Because you left from the same airport to that airport. You left from that airport to the same airport where you boarded your flight from. Amen? Do you know what happens? Why in, on your way back it, it adds an extra 30 minutes? Because maybe the airplane when it's coming back, it is coming in a different opposition from the wind. <laughs> and then that will impact the speed of the airplane. This is why instead of doing two hours, it takes you two and 30 minutes. Because the airplane coming from Melbourne to Brisbane was traveling from an opposite direction from the wind. <laughs> so then the speed is, the airplane is a little bit pushing and pushing. The airplane is pushing and pushing, but it is going to be a little bit delayed. But the good news is that you are going to get back to Brisbane. Oh! <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Somebody might just be experiencing a bit of delays. Amen? But you are going to get there. I like the moderator prayed about God taking away our shame. Amen. And truly, I thank you that God is just putting you on this way so that you may confirm his word. Amen. 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 It is just a delay you are going to get there. We are going to get there. Amen. I know for sure. Because the one we are worshiping is alive. He's powerful. He's faithful. He never changes. Amen? He never changes. And now here comes a time when Jesus is delivered, is betrayed by Judas, and he's taken 
towards his way to be crucified. <laughs> the Bible talks of Peter following him. <laughs> and he's seated outside while Jesus is going through a challenge. <laughs> and a woman comes, and a woman is coming to intimidate a man like Peter. She comes, are you one of him? Peter says, no. <laughs> Oh, you know, and, and the bad thing, the painful thing is that he just did not say no, but he denied him. Peter, are you, uh, um, uh, no, I don't know him. <laughs> That's very painful. Amen. That's very painful. Relationship is defined, is determined by acknowledgement. If I'm on my way, if I'm walking on the street, amen, and I'm not able to acknowledge my husband because he's a short man like me, when they ask you, is that your husband? <laughs> no, he, yeah, no, he's not. <laughs> you, you, see? you see, you are feeling shy of me because I'm a short man. That is very painful. <laughs> Yes, God created me as a short man. Amen? It pleased God that I am a short man. Amen? And thank God that you accepted to marry me. Then there is no reason for you to feel shy of me. Because if you are feeling shy of me, then it is you are hating me. You are hating me. <laughs> Peter says, Peter, even your speech is similar to this man. Uh, no, no, maybe that was French I was talking. It was not English. Peter, no, no, we heard you speaking English. Same, the same language this man was talking. No, I don't know him. Please do not disturb me. I don't know this man. <laughs> the strength of every relationship lies in the ability to acknowledge your partner. Amen? The strength of any relationship is, lies in the ability to acknowledge me as your partner, as your friend, as your brother, as your sister. Jesus. Oh, and when Peter denies him, Jesus looked at him. And Peter started crying. Peter was ashamed of himself. I think Peter is feeling ashamed. He's, he's, he's now acknowledging that God is always right. Amen? Jesus told him, you will deny him. Amen? God, brethren, is always right about our lives. Amen? God is always right about what he said about our lives. Amen? No wonder why you do not need to walk by what you see. You need to walk by what you know. Amen. Because what you see will always be different from what you know. Amen. Hallelujah. And Peter feels ashamed of himself. He starts crying. Oh, oh, oh. And he runs away. And he runs away. Now, try to put yourself in the shoes of Peter. Amen. He spent three good years, amen, following this man. He's abandoned his business for three good years following after this man. Amen? And now in the end of the story, he does not get anything out of this mission he has embarked on rather than feeling ashamed now. I, I don't know what other disciples felt about him or what other disciples said about him. I don't know. Amen? 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 But I want to believe that as he is crying, as he left, he could have felt ashamed of himself, denying the Lord. While he has confirmed that, no, I will go with you, amen? I will be with you right to wherever you are going to. Was not that a painful experience? Amen? Amen? Was that not a painful experience? And 
Jesus is taken, crucified on the cross. On the cross. Amen. He's on the cross. And the Bible says he was buried. And the good news is that on the third day, Jesus Christ rose up from the dead. Amen. And this is the scriptures that we have read. Amen. That early in that morning, amen. 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 Those ladies who went to the tomb, amen, to see what was happening, they found that the stone was rolled away and that the tomb was empty. But there was a man in white garments sitting on the tomb. And when he saw the ladies, he said to them, I know you are looking for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is no longer in the tomb. He is risen. Amen. Amen. He is risen from the dead. And our message this morning is now in this verse. And the angel said to the ladies that, Now what I'm telling you, go and tell his disciples that the man is risen. Amen. But I'm more interested in the second part of this verse. And, oh, preach with me, church of God. (laughs) Go and tell his disciples, and, oh, (laughs) go and tell his disciples, and, go and tell his disciples, and, what he's simply meaning is that go and tell Peter, regardless of what he has done, regardless of what has happened, regardless of his denial, I understand him. I forgive and I forget. Go and tell Peter that he has received forgiveness and he's restored back into his ministry. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Go and tell his disciples and... Amen. I don't know where Peter was. And I don't know what he was feeling after his denial experience. Amen. Amen. Go and tell Peter that I still love him. That I know him. That I I know where I called him from. I know him. He's an apostle. Amen. I don't care whether the others have rejected him already because of what happened to him. I don't know if he's in isolation right now. But go and tell him that I am risen. Amen. Go and tell him that he's been forgiven. Go and tell him that he will continue his um, um, apostolic ministry as I have called him. Amen. 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 He is going to preach the gospel as I said to him that he will no longer be a fisher of fish, but he will be a fisher of men. And he will continue that ministry. He will do that ministry. He will succeed in that ministry. Regardless of what he has done, I know him. I have called him. I am with him. I have forgiven him. I have restored him to his position. As an apostle of the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 And this is the restoration that we are crying for. Then this is the restoration that we are praying for this year. And tell power of the gospel church that I am risen, that I know them, that I have called them, that I am with them. And that this is the time. Amen. Oh, I know something is going on right now in your mind. But what is happening around me, Pastor Amos, is very different from the preaching you are sharing right now. <laughs> I'm told of the story of Apostle uh, Paul, amen, in the book of Acts 27, amen. You find the story, the Bible is talking about uh, um, Apostle Paul is traveling, amen, on the sea. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is a time when Paul was arrested in Jerusalem because, you know, of him preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But after being arrested, amen, he was found not guilty, amen, but he still had to travel to Rome, amen, to appear before Caesar. And this was a long journey in the sea. 
The Bible says that while they were, Paul was traveling in the sea with the other people, amen, that they encountered, they faced a great wind, amen. And as Paul is in that ship with the other people, one of the nights, the angel of God appeared to Paul, said to him that, Paul, I am telling you that there is no life that is going to be lost in this sea, amen. Things are going to be well, and you will reach to Rome, amen. You will reach your destination, amen. And Paul wakes up from that dream, and he tells the people, be of good cheer. I tell you that regardless of the wind we are experiencing right now, we are going to reach to our destination. Mm. But he's delivering such a message when the ship is experiencing problems in the sea. Amen. Amen. What he's seeing is different from what God has told him. (laughs) Have you ever asked yourself that question? God, you told me this is what will happen. But the life you are living right now is completely different from the word of God upon your life. The angel is telling Paul that you are going to get to your destination, but the ship is about to to be wrecked in the sea. And everyone is crying, we are perishing. Amen. Amen. This is why I said that you should not walk by what you are seeing, walk by what you know. Paul knew that the angel appeared to him, saying that Paul, oh, because he had to travel to, 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 to Rome so that he is acquitted from the, 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 the accusation. Amen. And the angel of God is assuring him that you will get there. Amen. I know what is happening around you is not going to put the end to this journey. You are truly going to reach your destination. Amen. Amen. And he encourages the people, be of good cheer. We are going to reach our destination. Amen. And as they were traveling, amen, they were traveling, they spent two weeks in that kind of situation of the wind. But when they were about to land, again, the Bible says that the ship wrecked. (laughs) And everyone was in the water. And what they did, they had to grab Pieces from the ship to help them reach to the land. Oh, no wonder why God is taking that ship away from you. So that to help you understand that what you thought was going to be helpful to you and to bring you to your destination is not the thing that God is going to use to get you there. (laughs) This is why he's taking the boat away from you. It is not what you thought was going to get you there. It is what God has planned in his own sovereignty that this is how and this is the way. This is how I'm going to do it. Amen. Even the little ship they were relying on was wrecked. And Paul grabs, I don't know, a piece and someone else a piece because God has assured that none of them was going to perish in that ship, amen, that they were all going to arrive safely. Amen, amen, amen. God is taking that ship away from you just to give you another experience. Amen, just to help you see and understand that his ways are different from your ways. Amen, that he's got a better way to get you there. Because he truly is seeing you getting there. Amen. 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 Because in the end of the story and in the plan of God, Paul had to reach to Rome to appear before Caesar. Amen. Hallelujah. He had to reach the destination. Regardless of the wind, he had to reach the destination because this was the plan of God. There is no way this wind was going to stop him or to put an end to his life because that was the plan. Amen. 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 You are still going to get there. Hallelujah. 
you are still going to get there. You are still going to get there. Amen. You can still make it. Amen. 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 Now, I don't know with Peter, with his story, in his situation. Amen. I don't know what was going on in his mind, in his life. Hallelujah. But the angel of God, God says, go and tell him that he will still preach the gospel as an apostle. Amen. Amen. Go and tell Peter. Amen. You might have messed up. This is why I said that life, amen, is not always a straight line. It has ups and downs. It brings joy. It brings laughter. It brings crying sometimes. Amen. It brings moments of victory. It brings moments of defeat. Amen. And I said the other time, sometimes you have to lose in order to win. <laughs> Amen. Because that's another strategy. Amen. Go and tell Peter that I am risen. Amen. Hallelujah. That he is forgiven. Amen. You might have messed up in one way or another. Amen. Amen. But be rest assured that his mercy, his grace is sufficient. Amen. His grace, his mercy is sufficient. Amen. And you can only make it by him, not by yourself. Only by him. Peter was confident in himself. That, Lord, I'm going to die with you. He, he did not know that he needed some supernatural power in order to accomplish, to achieve. Amen? The mission God was calling him for. It is not by you. It is by the Spirit of God. Amen? Tell Peter that he is going to get there. He's going to preach the gospel. He's forgiven. He's restored. Amen. Amen. Are you feeling hopeless because of what has happened in your life? Because of what is happening in your life? Are you feeling hopeless? Are you feeling disappointed? Are you feeling lost? Are you feeling ashamed? Amen. Because of the pain that the devil is inflicting in your life. Are you feeling ashamed? Are you feeling disappointed? Are you feeling abandoned? Amen. I don't care what was everyone else thinking or saying about Peter. What was most important is that go and tell his disciples, and Peter. <laughs> and Peter. He's loved. He's still loved. He's still known. He has called you by your name. Amen. He has called you by your name. As you are seated there right now, he knows you by your name. He, can, he even numbers, he knows even the number of your hair on top of your head. He knows you by your name. You are not there by mistake. Amen. 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 What I'm simply saying, brethren, that God has not given up on you. He's still with us. He's still with you. He knows you. Amen. Go and tell Peter. Amen. I know even this world, as the moderator was saying, that we sometimes experience shame, pain, injustice, and all those kind of things. Amen. But the good news is that go and tell Peter our names are known in heaven. Amen. Our names are known in heaven. Our names are known in heaven. Amen. 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 And he is risen. Amen. He is risen. 
This is the reason why we can worship, we can preach, we can praise him. Because he is risen. He is risen. Amen. And the same power that raised him from the dead is living within you to resurrect every dead situation. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. 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 He knows you. He loves you. He is with you. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.